Hello and welcome to the Deck Tech. I'm Ian Duke. With me is Chris Botello, and we have something awesome in store for you all at home. Chris, I'm told you invented a very unusual deck this weekend. First, before we jump in, what do you call your deck? Uh, I am calling it Fevered Tesla Turbo Fog 4000. Okay, I didn't quite catch all that, but I'm sure we'll get into the details. Uh, <laughs> sounds pretty unique for sure. Um, before we get into the individual cards, can you give us just a very quick one minute overview of what your deck is trying to do? I definitely can. Uh, we basically got four or three important parts of the deck. We have Dynavolt Tower, which makes energy, lots of it. We have Consulate Surveillance, which takes that energy and turns it into fog effects to let us live longer to cast more spells. And in case we start to run low on spells, and in case at any point we decide we want to actually win the game, I guess, we've got Fevered Visions to draw cards and make our opponent draw cards and then lose a life. But mostly we draw cards. That's the important thing. Wow, I can't wait to see this deck. That sounds like a really unusual collection of cards. So why don't we take a look at the first group and you can kind of walk us through all the key components here. So first up, right. Dynavolt Tower. This is a card I'm super excited to see here this weekend. Yes. It's like the Johnniest of all Johnny cards. Tell us about how it works. So Dynavolt Tower is a three mana artifact that says whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you get two energy and also there's a bit of text down there at the bottom where you tap it and pay five energy and deal three damage to a creature or player. Sometimes that kills something, sometimes it ends up killing a player, but mostly it makes energy and that's great. Uh, we've also got a couple of other cards here that make energy. We've got Harness Lightning, which makes energy and also sometimes kills creatures, but mostly it makes energy. And Glimmer of Genius, which scries and draws cards, which is great at instant speed, but mostly it makes energy. So this is really unusual. I wouldn't expect a deck with Dynavolt Tower in it to not really intend to use the Dynavolt Tower that much. I mean, use the second activated ability there, but it's really just in the deck to generate a lot of energy? Uh, it, it does sometimes kill the opponent, but yeah, mostly it's there to get energy, and we've got a really great payoff card for it. So yeah, why don't we take a look and see what that payoff card might be here. I assume right. you're talking about Consulate Surve Surveillance yes. then? Consulate Surveillance is our Fog effect of choice. Now, we've had Turbo Fog decks before, and Turbo Fog kind of involved playing like 20 Fog effects and getting to cast one every turn. I thought that was cool, <laughs> but what if we had a card that was all of those Fog effects, but it only ever costed one card? So we've got Consulate Surveillance. It says get four energy, and then you can pay two energy to prevent all damage that we've dealt by a source of your choice until end of turn to you. Uh, not creatures, but we're not playing creatures, so we don't care about that. And so, this, this can prevent damage not just from opposing creatures, but also nope. from any source, right? A burn any spell, source. for example. Uh, Chandra Emblems are a source. <laughs> if you cast four spells with a Chandra Emblem, that's four different instances of damage, but that's all the same source, so you only need to pay two energy to get rid of all of it. Wow, that's pretty cool. Have you ever actually beaten a Chandra element, uh, Emblem with this card? I have. You have? That's uh, pretty cool. It, it's got to feel pretty miserable. I have beaten <laughs> two Chandra Emblems on the field at the same time with wow. that card. That's pretty wild. And then Fumigate, of course, are Wrath variant for the format. I yes. imagine this works pretty well with the Consulate Surveillance in that yes. your opponent's trying to build up lots of creatures to get past your Consulate Surveillance and make you spend lots of energy, mm -hmm. and then you just sweep them all away. Yeah, that's the goal. Uh, force our opponent to commit more to the board in order to get through Consulate Surveillance and punish them for it. Sounding pretty cool so far. Let's take a look at what we have next. We have a lot of removal and Fevered Visions. So Fevered Visions is here mostly as a Howling Mine. Uh, the fact that it eventually wins the game is an upside, but mostly it's there because we have cheaper spells than our opponent, and we have cards that generate more advantage for less mana than our opponent. We're running Radiant Flames, we're running things like Lightning Axe and Galvanic Bombardment, when our opponents are playing one and two drop creatures. Well, if both of you are drawing a ton of cards and have to discard a hand size every turn because nobody can cast all your cards, the person who's using the one mana removal spells is better off than the person who's trying to cast the two and three mana creatures. That's pretty cool. I'm starting to see this come together. So basically, if your opponent's deck has lots of expensive spells in it, then they just can't cast them all and they keep yep. drawing more cards with Fever Visions. But if they're emptying their hand and playing lots of small creatures, well, you can sweep them away with Radiant Flames or even just answer them with mm -hmm. lots of one-for-ones. And Fever Visions gets a little worse when our opponent starts playing the one-drop game plan too. So that's when it has to come out. But against anything that wants to be casting two and three drops, it's amazing. And so is your end goal against most decks to have like 4x Fevered Visions on the battlefield and just they can't cast their spells in time and die? Pretty much. Yeah, that's I, pretty cool. Every single game I have played thus far has had someone discarding a hand size. <laughs> that sounds like a good thing, I guess, for uh, given how you <laughs> built your deck. Uh, let's take a look at uh, what we have left, uh, rounding kind of out the non-creature or non-land spells in the deck. 
uh, anticipates draws into our combo pieces. We need to hit a good mix. Consulate Surveillance kind of gets bad if you don't have Dynavolt Tower. And Dynavolt Tower is good, but not great without Consulate Surveillance. Mm -hmm. And Fevered Visions is okay without either of those. But it's a deck that really wants everything to come together. And Anticipate is a great way to help do that. And you can chain them together to get a ton of energy. Seems pretty cool. And then, yeah, Declaration in Stone, Blessed Alliance, just rounding out your removal. More here. general removal. Uh, Declaration in Stone turns out to be pretty important against decks that are playing uh, Emrakul. We don't really have a good way to interact with it because we're pretty much entirely instance. And so just the combination of being sorcery speed and exiling the Emrakul, both really important yeah. there. Most then, of the Emrakul decks are trying to recur it, so getting rid of it forever is a big deal. Absolutely. And then Blessed Alliance is a card that we've seen show, starting to show up in Standard a little bit more frequently. Is there something specific that this card is against? Uh, it is against Gideon and Hexproof creatures mostly. There's a really good red-green combo pummeler infect sort of deck out right, there. Right, right. Uh, getting around hexproof is big. And then just having a way to gain four life sometimes ends up being important. Sounds awesome, loving it so far. Take a look at what we have next here, looking at the mana base, anything in particular standing out here? Of course, I see the, the ether hubs, Aether sound hubs. Like they're awesome, given the rest of the deck. Everybody's probably there. Um, we've got a pretty good untapped mana base. Uh, inspiring Vantage is a three of instead of a four of because it turns out that when you're drawing a ton of cards with Fever Visions, you want to be able to cast all your spells and eventually you need to start hitting your fifth and sixth land drop. And so I went with seven of the fast lands and it's been working out for me. Crumbling Vestige is the uh, real different card that I haven't seen a lot of other people playing, but it's, it's just good. Uh, I've got a lot of different uh, cards I want to cast on two mana, three mana that have pretty heavy mana requirements. Consul or, uh, Crumbling Vestige does a good job of letting me cast permanent speed cards for that, and then eventually it still makes mana. Yeah, it makes a ton of sense. And rounding things out, uh, just a few basic lands here, a couple yep. planes, mountains, islands. The deck looks awesome. I can't wait to give it a try. You know, if I was going to FNM coming up soon, this is yeah. definitely the deck I would build. I'd give it a whirl on Magic Online. How are things going for you in the tournament so far? Uh, pretty good. So far, 3-2, but... Uh, Hoping to make that 4-2. I said going in, I wanted my goal to be to make day two for the first time, and that's looking pretty attainable. Yeah, absolutely. I wish you good games in the, in the rest of the tournament. I'm Ian Duke with Chris Botello, signing off from Deck Tech.